everybody. This is Lisa. And this is Joe. And welcome to your Cheap Date Show for January 5th, 2008. On this week's show... It's Soul Deluxe. Oh, and you are Soul Deluxe. I am the epitome of Soul Deluxe. Many people don't know that. I don't know that. (laughs) I don't know who does know that. Well, welcome to the Cheap Date Show, ladies and gentlemen. The first one of 2008. Hi, honey. Hi. I'm looking at my lovely wife across the table, who's sitting there with a big smile on her face. I and guess the smile's not coming through the mic. Yeah, sorry. I know. Well, it, yeah, it's fine. So we're here for the first show of 2008, and what a show it's going to be. What a show. Let me tell you. But before we get to that and what all Soul Deluxe is, tell me about your holiday. How are your holiday season? How was your holiday season, I should say? Fantastic. Yeah? It is really cold here now. It is. But it was not super cold during the holidays. It was nice. It was great. Um, Just the right amount of snow, I think. We had a big snowstorm about a week and a half before Christmas. Just the right amount of snow, just the right amount of cold. Enough to feel festive. We got all our shopping done by like the 22nd, which Mm -hmm. was awesome. Made a ton of cookies. I mean a ton. I gained several pounds, just so you know. (laughs) Just an FYI. I didn't, but then I never do. But but it was a lot of fun. It was very nice having a full-size kitchen, and this was our first uh, Christmas as husband and wife. That's right. First Christmas as husband and wife, and first Christmas in the new house. Kids had a great time. We have some new additions to the house. They we did. have... Uh, We're now all guitar heroes. Yeah, we have guitar hero, <laughs> sing star. Oh, oh gosh. I... Uh. And Lisa... Parents be warned about sing star. <laughs> that seems like a great idea. I don't know, it really seemed like a good idea at the time. And you have an addition in your kitchen. I which do. Which was not a Christmas present because I refused to buy you gadgetry for Christmas. I got a Cuisinart full-size 14-cup capacity food processor. Oh, yeah. And she's insane with it. It's a beast. Yes, it's a spinning blade of awesomeness. <laughs> You can slice, you can chop, you can shred, you can knead. Mm -hmm. I I have a mixer that I use for, I mean, you could mix with it, really. You could use it in place of a mixer sometimes. I still use my mixer for standard mixing projects, but you saw that carrot. Oh, yeah. Sliced a pound of carrots into perfect slices in like 40 seconds. Those carrots didn't stand a chance. And you also made your, uh, you made biscuit dough. I did. Yeah. A food processor is awesome for making any kind of dough where you want the butter to get pulverized, but not melted. Or the manteca. Or the, that's true. That's, yeah, my biscuit recipe is now half uh, lard and half butter. Oh. <laughs> I'm wondering what happened when I got on the scale at the health club. Match made in heaven. <laughs> that's why I didn't make biscuits last night, pal. Okay. Well, you should have. So the holidays were very good to us. We got to see family and friends and a little bit of time. And we did get to do our traditional trip to Buffalo Joe's in Evanston. Oh, heavenly. That's right. That is oh, Buffalo Joe's hot, wings. Hot, spicy wings dripping oh. with buttery goo. Okay. Now you're getting me hungry. Let's talk about something else that's going to make us hungry. Yes. With that's, delicious that's buttery we goo. Here. We went to Heaven on 7, which is a Chicago tradition in the truest Well, I don't know about the truest sense. The story of Heaven on Seven is that um, a guy by the name of Jimmy Banos, who was uh, fresh out of cooking school, he started working at his parents' coffee shop, which is on the seventh floor of the Garland Building, which is right in downtown Chicago, right in the loop, just off of right where the L takes a little turn. Uh, Jimmy was experimenting with Louisiana-style cooking, and customers were sampling his gumbo and red beans while sipping their coffee. And at some point, the family decided, you know what, we're just going to turn this place into a Cajun restaurant, which is what they did. So their uh, location right there in the loop in the Garland building is still there. And then we they they actually have a couple other locations. They have one in Downers Grove, which recently opened. And then we went to the one. Oh, I didn't know that. We went to the one at Rush in Ohio, which actually has an address of 600 North Michigan Avenue, which is very, very misleading because you don't get in on Michigan Avenue. You get in on Rush Street, which is the other side of the building, the back end of the building. It was a Saturday night. It was very snowy, and we decided that we were in the mood for some spicy food. 
Usually Heaven on 7 is pretty crowded. You walk into the building, you actually have to go up a very long escalator because there's a movie theater in the building as well. Mm-hmm. It's Yeah, it's not what you would think for a restaurant building, mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know if that made any sense. Well, it's the back end of a mall is what it is. Yeah. It's the 600 North Michigan building, which is has a bunch of stores on the inside of it. Mm-hmm. And if you come in on the rush side, you're basically going up the back of the building. And there's this, like I said, there's this massive two-story escalator you got to go up. And then you go up another story to get up to the movie theaters. But this is sort of on so the So if you're afraid between. of heights, not don't for you. Don't go. So anyway, we go in there. It was uh, there were people waiting, but there were a couple of spots available at the counter. And as you may have heard from those <laughs> from from those times on the cheap date show where we didn't feel like waiting, we are not too proud to sit at the counter, especially no, since sir. that's right up there where all the action takes place. So we sat down and did we have drinks? I don't remember. Um, no, because we had had drinks at lunch. Oh yes, oh, I had. We'll talk about that in a minute too. We'll have a we'll have a bonus mini review on that Anyhow. one as well. <laughs> so we didn't have drinks, but we did start off at Heaven on Seven with the gumbo. No, no, no. Well, okay, we had a gumbo. Oh, but even before the gumbo. Before the gumbo, we enjoyed a plate <laughs> filled with the sweet potato moss. Yum. Oh. So, okay, here's what they did. They didn't. Ju- I wouldn't <laughs> call that. I wouldn't call that julienne because it was very. Th- it was Tremendous! It was very, very, very thinly thin. sliced. It was like floss. Yeah, it was shredded. But it was long. R- yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, it was um like spiral. Right. And it was served in like a big giant haystack. And it was deep fried <laughs> haystack. Yes. Deep fried, and then served on a plate. So this plate comes. There was a couple sitting next to us, and they're like, "Oh, geez, look at that! That must be the sweet potato moss." The thing was, the plate came, and it was probably the size of a 16-inch softball, I would say. I mean, it was yeah. huge. Yeah, it was big. And it was, but it was very airy. It was light, and it was fried, and it was, you know, sweet potatoes yeah. that had been... Just melt in your mouth. And there was some sauce, so- there was a sauce on it, too. There was one of the, I think it was their house hot sauce that was sort of dripped, drizzled on it. Yeah. But that was, that was a good way to start. But it's one of those things where, it's not like onion rings where you can eat onion and you start to feel a little bit full. With this stuff, you eat it, and it's kind of like eating like packing material. <laughs> you're just you're not <laughs> getting material. you're not satisfied it's a lot at all. Better than packing material. Well, I know. I mean that in a good way. Yes. I mean yes. packing material in it's the like good way. It's like deep fried air. <laughs> all you just taste mm. fried. But it was mm. it was delicious. Then we followed that up with the uh, cup of the gumbo. Right. We wanted sure. something a little healthier, some yeah. soup. You know that was wonderful. And then oh, you always have to get the. Um, Big jalapeno cheddar muffin. Jalapeno cheddar corn muffin. Corn muffin. Yes. Right. So that came with our dinner, but that is, as advertised, a giant corn muffin with cheddar and chopped up jalapeno oh, pepper. So good. And I'll describe my entree quickly so that you can get to yours since yours is the big cojona. I had the etouffee of the day. The etouffee of the day was Mardi Gras, which is a little of everything. It's shrimp, chicken, beef. Pork. Was there sausage in there too? Sausage. That's all I can think of. Plus the vegetables that always come with um, an, an etouffee and rice. And it was delicious. I thought that was wonderful. And I very much enjoyed the variety of tasty bits that were in there. But it was nothing. Comp- well, it was not nothing. But it was not so much compared to the sampling from the bayou that is the Louisiana Soul Deluxe. Now this was... Some kind of wonderful. Tell us about it, Soul if Man. You don't mind me. <laughs> this was really, really good stuff. Signify. I, I wasn't really sure what I was looking for, but I knew that I wanted something. Well, <laughs> I, I knew I wanted something spicy, and I was thinking about the etouffee of the day. Everything there is spicy. I know, I know, though, but it's like, what should you get? I mean, exactly. You thought about jambalaya. We didn't both want to get etouffee. So then I looked and I said, oh. Louisiana Soul Deluxe, a sampling from the bayou. Tell me what's on this thing. So our server said, well, here's what you get. You get the Mardi Gras jambalaya, which is the jambalaya with everything in it. All the stuff in it, right? Uh, Red beans and rice with andouille sausage. And what it was, it was red beans and the andouille sausage was actually, it was a piece of sausage. I mean, it wasn't chopped up. It was a, it was actually a length of sausage, would you say? I would say. Okay. There was that. Uh, Hop and John, which is black eyed peas with sausage, that was chopped up. Mm-hmm. And collard greens. Mm. Man, talk about a party on a plate. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was, it was. really, really, really good. The andouille sausage I thought was especially impressive. It was served mm-hmm. with a little like honey mustard. Yes. Which at first didn't appeal to me at all, but then when I tasted it, the andouille sausage was a little bit like bratwurst, only spicier than bratwurst maybe. Right. So the sweetness of the honey mustard softened it up a little bit, but also the mustard tanged it up a little bit. It was really, it was really amazing. Right. Everything on your plate was really amazing, but that in particular, when she described the plate, didn't sound very good to me. And then when I had it, it was wonderful. Yeah. Knock my socks off. We didn't have dessert. We saw some pretty good desserts oh, going geez. by. Yeah, we saw these like peanut butter pies <laughs> 12 inches high going by, but no, we did not need any dessert. Since we were that. sitting right at the uh, right at the counter, we got to see the actual kitchen guys in action. Mm-hmm. So there were two guys at one end that we were sitting near who were the dessert guys, and they were they were having the time of their lives <laughs> because they had they had access to the most fun stuff. They have a deep dish pecan pie, a deep dish chocolate oh. pecan pie. Uh, there's the chocolate peanut butter pie. You can get a slice of it six bucks, but a whole one is thirty dollars. <laughs> Mississippi mud pie, bread pudding. I saw someone ordered a chunk of that too. That looked really good too. But ah, uh. now they have a whole bunch of. They have a complete menu. But they do all the classics. They do the etouffees. They do the gumbos. They do the jambalaya. The Hop and Johnny said they also do uh, fried oyster plates. They do crab cakes. I have had the crab cakes there in the past. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. It's oh, wonderful stuff. They do chicken fried steak, which I've also had previously, which is really good. The one thing that they, that they do, which, frankly, I find a little bit on the touristy side, is they have... The wall, oh, yeah. they have the wall o hot sauces. Well, uh-huh. first of all, on the table or on the counter where you're at, there's like 40 different hot sauces. Right. My theory is that there are probably six different hot sauces that are out there, and then everyone else creates their own labels and slaps them on. Yeah, well, I mean, you can only vary hot sauce so much. Usually with some variation of devils and various body parts that are on <laughs> fire and, you know. Hot mamas. <laughs> Flaming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a few of them, you know, there are a few sauces that are good. The house, I found, I did find that, I mean, I like, I'm a big fan of Tabasco. All the Tabascos. I'm a big fan of all the Tabascos. Sorry, I didn't mean to Do you go this. back and listen to this? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that out in editing. Oh, wait, we don't edit. I find yeah, that the Heaven do, on Yeah, we do, leave seven. that in. <laughs> I find that the Heaven on Seven house, house hot sauce, which is on the table, is actually one of the best ones. It's there. Yeah, and I'm I like spicy food, but I don't like food. I mean, my spicy threshold is not that high, and I was very very happy. Right. I think if you had somebody who was really tender palated, they might be at a little bit of a loss. I'm not sure what you would order, but they have some pastas, and right. I don't know. I w- I wanted something pretty uh, spicy. Mm-hmm. So oh, they have like fried cat fried catfish. Yeah, they that do. wouldn't be spicy. And I've had that as an appetizer actually. They also have... No, I have it. There, there's a fried catfish appetizer on And there. I'll have a side of um, steak. <laughs> and let me and, have some uh, uh, crawfish tails. You want to send some of those over too? Yeah. They also offer cooking classes at the Wabash location. For 75 Aww. bucks a person, you get a five-course demonstration, and all you can eat... Or, I'm sorry, all you can drink... Beer, wine, and hurricanes. I'm assuming you have your choice. I don't think you have to drink beer, wine, and hurricanes. Are you kidding me? All you me? can drink. Tax and gratuity. And after that, you're supposed to remember how to cook something? Exactly. I think that maybe that's Surely what they they're do. not letting you like get around burners or flames or anything. <laughs> you just stand over here and watch how we do this. So that's something that we might do. They do them once a month. There's actually one coming up on January 11th. That's pricey, but it would be a lot of fun. It would be a great... A, blast they also do something called the hot as a mother which is a five course <laughs> meal five course meal with uh, spicy recipes that's 35 dollars, including the meal plus drinks that's by invitation basically you get on their mailing list and they'll tell you when they do that actually yeah they're not on this um this menu i have in front of me but they have a couple different tasting menus like five seven and ten courses oh yeah somebody there weren't the people next to it on the other side they were thinking yeah, about doing they were the, the other one about that but uh, the waitress said it takes like, like if you want the 10 course thing, it takes like three hours. Yeah. So probably more like a party event. We might try one of the tastings sometimes. That would be fun. Definitely. And mm-hmm. that is at, uh, as we said, Rush and Ohio in Chicago. That is Heaven on 7. You can get their website, which is heavenon7.com. Anything else to say about this is place? 7 the number or spell? Heaven on 7, S-E-V-E-N.
All right. And for those of you listening to that, that would be, you would recognize that voice as John Fogarty of Creedence Clearwater Revival. And that was a recording he did with a band called the Blue Ridge Rangers, which was basically himself. <laughs> Singing the old classic song, Jambalaya, which I understand my father heard many, many, many times over in uh, Korea because it was a popular <laughs> song back then. <laughs> And the only record they had, probably. I think so. Yeah. It was, I think it was that record, probably the Joe Stafford version or the Hank Williams version. And uh, they had one movie on the transport boat. Which was? Singing in the Rain. That's right. <laughs> so he's told that story before. We should have him on the show sometime and tell. He's got those great stories about the fish head soup that the guys would oh, make. Oh, yeah. He was over there. Yeah. Well, let's make fish head soup. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Well, okay. Nice. On that same weekend, we'll just mention very quickly, we went to two other places in uh, Chicago. One, the next morning, we actually reviewed this place once before. We went to Wishbone at 3300 North Lincoln Avenue at School Street. Dude, I have two words for you, and those two words are cheese grits. Yes. (laughs) Oh. We were on a spicy... A spicy bent that weekend, so we decided that we'd try something really, really. We were deciding on what to do for breakfast, and we thought, uh, like, oh, wishbone. <gasps> yes. Absolutely fantastic. I don't even remember what I had. I like think a you, had a, you, you had an omelet. But you had an omelet, and I just had eggs. But the, the one thing that I really, that yeah, I had cheese grits with mine. And let me tell you something, it was awesome. With a little Tabasco. Mm-hmm. In fact, the photo that's going to be on the blog when you take a look at the posting. For this will be a picture of my breakfast at Wishbone the next morning. We reviewed this place on our show a couple of years ago now. Also for breakfast, I think, right? <clears throat> also for breakfast. It's a wonderful place. They call it Southern Reconstruction Cooking. They have a couple of locations. We went to the one on North Lincoln Avenue, so check that out. That was really awesome. They have a lot of great... You can get, like, catfish for breakfast, andouille hash. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of Lots of great, like... And a few different, like, Mexican kind of dishes, breakfast dishes. Yeah. So, really great. I'm totally into the spicy breakfast now. Yeah. And I highly recommend it. When we go to the White Palace, which is another one of our favorite breakfast places, which mm-hmm. which we've reviewed in Chicago, which we've reviewed on the show before. That's right in downtown Chicago, or just in, in the South Loop area, or actually south, south and west of the South Loop area. Yeah. Your favorite thing there is the... Chilaquiles. Chilaquiles. And my favorite thing is the chorizo mm-hmm. omelet. We're going to come back and we're going to do classic cheap dates. I think we're going to revisit <laughs> places that we went to before. Earlier in the afternoon on the day of the visit to Heaven on 7, we met some friends of Lisa's. And yours. And mine. Some friends. At a restaurant right near our hotel, which is Elephant and Castle. Yes. the much We've talked much about, well, not on the show, but... Um, we have talked about Elephant and Castle. I had never been there. You had. I have. I've been but to the, not the same yeah, location. Right. I've been to the one in, in the loop. This one, is, the one that we went to, is the one that is at 160 East Huron. Oh, they have locations everywhere. Uh-huh. I didn't even realize yeah. this. They even have, oh, our, our, you know what? There's one on Yonge Street in Toronto. So those of you oh. people up in Canada, head on up. You'll <laughs> like it. There's a bunch of them in Canada, actually. That Boston, Chicago, it. Washington, D.C., Philly. San Diego, San Francisco, Seattle. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, Grove City, PA, and Harrisburg, PA. So anyway, Elephant and Castle, in a couple words, what can we say about it? Pub food. Yeah, pretty much. What did I have? Like a seafood, it wasn't even a chowder, it was just like a seafood soup. It was good. I wasn't very hungry. I'm not sure why not. But the beer was good. I was thirsty. (laughs) (laughs) I had a burger, and I think I had uh, I had cheddar on mine. Yeah, how was and the it burger? Was, it was very good. It was it was a classic. A of it was a classic burgers. pub burger kind of thing. the 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 standard for Irish pub style places for us is Peggy Canaan's here in Arlington Heights. For me, that's the burger standard. That, that's more true. even than Irish. Elephant Castle is really good. I've been there a few times, and you know it's it's good, solid pub food. If you like that, if you like that kind of thing, and let's face it, who doesn't? <laughs> and you like cold beer, that's the place to go. Guinness meatloaf. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's all good. Jameson chicken. <laughs> I like the way they think. I know. 
Why didn't I get that stuff? Well, anyway. Anyway. So that was good. We sat there with some friends. Our, the service was very nice. They were very friendly. Um, yeah, we was, sat there um, for like 18 hours. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of quiet in there that day. We were, um, well, there were there was some construction going on outside. And uh, I think they were, I think their walk-by traffic was light. But um, yeah, it was great. We had a great time there. there Reasonably priced. Mm-hmm. So this episode, you got three restaurant reviews for the price of, well, none. <laughs> is the show free? It is. Wow. You thought you were getting you thought we were getting paid for this all along? No, I thought the listeners surely would be paying for this. Yeah, well they don't. How much would you expect to pay for a show like this? Eight ninety nine, but wait, there's more. This is Ginsu Two. Ah. In Japan, the hand can be used like a knife. You <laughs> like what are you talking about? Did you see that commercial? No. Where the guy tries a karate chop a tomato? No. I think we've talked really? about this on the show. The guy who came up with that idea passed away a year or two ago. Karate chopping a, big a tomato? Yeah. Did and you look work? at it and you go, ha, ha, ha. Look, that guy just smashed a tomato. Okay. Anything else you want to report Sounds to these amazing. folks before we let them go? <laughs> No. We have lots of great things planned for 2008, folks. I am not kidding. There's all kinds of really, really cool stuff that's going to be coming it's up. It's amazing. You're not going to believe it. It's amazing. You guys, you're going to be listening to this, and you're going to be like, wow, look at what the What did they do now? Oh, my gosh. You have got to be kidding me. Exactly. And as we've often said, by all means, if you're coming to Chicago, drop us a note. And uh, we actually had some listeners drop us a note. They wanted to hook up with us during the uh, during the holiday season, but it was when we were unavailable. We had some family things going on, so we weren't able to connect with them. Yeah, holidays are tough. Yeah. But normally we love doing that. Or if you're coming to Chicago and you're looking for a recommendation on something, by all means, give us drop us a line. We can send you some recommendations as well because that's what we do. Absolutely. And if people want to get a hold of us, how do they do that? They should email cheapdateshow at gmail.com. Or you can leave a voicemail at 206-203-3283, which spells date. Clever. I know. Isn't that isn't that just clever, clever, clever? And we'd like to thank everyone for all the notes and just for out there being you and listening to us. And we thank you. We'd like to thank you for downloading and listening to this show for as long as we've been doing it. And as long as you keep listening, we're going to keep putting this nonsense out there. (laughs) Good luck (laughs) on your return to real life post-holiday. So we will talk to you in a fortnight. Thanks again for listening. Good night. This podcast is a production of Jeep Date Media at jeepdatemedia.com.